Okay, it's ready. Yeah. <coughs> I'd like to call to order this meeting of the uh, Bartlett Plan Commission uh, for February 8th, 2018 at 7.13. Will the secretary call the roll? Jim Lumber. Yes. Mark Hopkins. Here. Tim Reidenauer. John Miasso. Here. Diane Nagel. Austin Hopkins. Jack Allen. Here. Jerry Callis. Here. Tom Connor. Here. We have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is the approval of December 14, uh, 2017 meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any additions or corrections? Secretary, call the roll. Mark Hopkins. Yes. John Miasso. Yes. Jack Allen. Yes. Jerry Callis. Yes. Tom Connor. Yes. Jim Lemberg. Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda is number 17-24, southwest corner of Lake Street and Route 59. This is a public hearing. If anyone in the audience is going to have a question or comment, we have a form back there where the clock is to fill out with your uh, name and address and so forth and give it to the staff over here so that you can call at the appropriate time. And if you have uh, a speech or anything like that, we'll limit it to three minutes and try not to keep bringing up the same topic over and over again. Thank you. Um, the number 17-24 is annexation of the east lot, 3.6 acres, rezoning of the east lot, 3.6 acres upon annexation, and the west lot, 7.2 acres from ER1, a state residential, to B4, community shopping zoning district. Again, it's a public hearing. If you have any questions, we have a form to fill out. Okay, just gotta get the first page here. Uh, Angela, would you uh, have all the documentations, mailings, and signs being posted? Yes, I do. You do. And if you'd like to fill in the commission. Of course. Um, so a little history. The site is comprised of two lots. Um, we're referring it to as the east lot and the west lot. Uh, in 1990, the village of Bartlett annexed the west lot, which is 7.2 acres. And that property was part of the Route 59 and Lake Street improvements by IDOT and the former Grow camping site. Upon annexation, the west lot was zoned ER1, which it still is today. In 2004, the village of Bartlett approved and designated the Route 59 and Lake Street redevelopment project area on the west lot as a precursor to creating a, a TIF district for properties located at the southwest corner of Lake Street and Route 59, of which the west lot was included. The east lot was purchased by the village of Bartlett in 2005, but it was never annexed or developed. It was purchased as part of a land assembly for the opportunity to establish a commercial lifestyle, lifestyle shopping center, which unfortunately did not happen either. The Village of Bartlett has been marketing these lots for commercial development and has recently hired SBN commercial real estate advisors to sell the lots. And so the village is requesting to annex the east lot, which is 3.6 acres, and then the west lot is within the corporate limits in zoned ER1, and so the village is requesting to rezone the east lot upon annexation and the west lot to the B4 commercial community shopping district. Uh, currently a vacant building and parking lot are located on the west lot. Um, so we are not looking to develop anything at this time. We don't have anyone interested in the property. Um, we just wanted to market it better and have it already rezoned and ready to go if somebody does come in. And then the east lot, we definitely want that to be a part of our corporate limits and not stay unincorporated. And staff recommends approval um, to the rezonings with those four conditions that a building permit needs to be requ or is required. They have to submit a public improvement completion agreement, the zoning map be updated if rezoned, and the annexation <clears throat> plat be recorded. Thank you. So the only access then for this property would be coming off of Lake Street on the current road that's there. Correct. At this time, the only access is off that frontage road. Um, the ultimate plan would be a developer come in and purchase the whole property that's in the TIF district. 
that actually is, it encompasses our two lots right here, and then it would encompass these lots in here, and even go all the way further down to that storage facility. So the ultimate plan would be for someone to purchase all of those lots together, and then do some type of different development, and then have access off Route 59. Okay, the um, property to the south, where it says B4 on that map, how much of that is a wetland? A pretty good chunk of the western portion is wetland. Well then, what would be the possibility of somebody building on it? If it's, you know, quite a bit of wetland, you're just looking at it, you can see all the standing water that's in there, and, you know, access to it, you know, they, if they can get a, an access off of Route 59, it's a maybe, but... How, how does a village think that they're going to get a developer to come in on such a low piece of property? There is a possibility you can mitigate wetlands. Um, they'd have to go through the Army Corps and through Cook County, so they could fill in the wetlands if they ever wanted to. So, there, I mean, there's a possibility for future <coughs> development. Or we would just keep all the development towards Route 59 on this, on this half. So, out of that large piece of property that's down there, maybe only 20% you can build on. I'd say probably more like 50%, but yes. And that's without moving the wetland or doing anything to that? Correct. Okay, any members have uh, questions? Question. Not yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Angelo, what does the uh, comprehensive plan show for this area, all these lots? Comprehensive plan shows all these lots as commercial development. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Jerry? Here? No. Nothing. John? Okay. Not yet any. No further questions. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have any questions right now at this time, then I will open this up to the public. And again, if there's uh, anyone that has a comment or a question, fill out the form, bring it over to staff, and they'll call your name. Come up to the microphone and give us your name and address, please. And please limit to about three minutes. Okay. Brian Thomas. Actually, up here at the podium microphone, and it's already on. You can just give your name and address first, please. Good evening. Uh, Brian Thomas, 1260 Spalding Road. Thank you for the right and the privilege to speak in front of you. I'm, I've been a Bartlett resident for 26 years, and I want to voice my concerns with this project. Uh, my first concern is traffic through the subdivision of Amber Grove East and Eagles Ridge. Uh, right now you have Horizon, and then it turns into Spalding Road. And I'm concerned with how that, will, how that will be rerouted and how that would be worked if this project goes through. Another concern that I have is just the uh, aesthetics of commercial buildings in that area. I would like that to be uh, voiced. There are uh, kids, kids in the area. There's playgrounds on Spalding Road and a couple of the side roads there. That concerns me with the traffic that may go through. I'm concerned with crime. What will it do to crime? And again, if, how this, is, if this is allowed, how will the traffic be rerouted? How will the traffic lights uh, happen? And how this may affect the value of my property? Thank you. Thank you. John LaPish. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman, members. <clears throat> My name is John LaPish, 1062 Horizon, Bartlett. I'm the president of the Eagles Ridge Condominium Association. <clears throat> many of the members, many of the owners in this subdivision have purchased at various times. Many of them got caught in the bubble that burst real estate-wise. Today, 
according to some of the real estate companies that are hounding us at times. <clears throat> property values in this area have, are increasing and are getting back to where they used to be. The thought of having a commercial development adjacent to and visible to this area and the traffic that would be uh, developed, the traffic that would occur because of it will do nothing but destroy the property values that are currently there. I ask the Commission to consider very carefully the rezoning of the part that's currently ER1. This has always been and has been thought to be a buffer for any commercial development that would occur during that, in that area. It is our contention that it should remain ER1 for that very purpose. If you want to develop that area as, as business, commercial, fine, but we need to have some protection in the way of traffic controls and so forth. In other words, as was the former witness indicated, traffic going through Horizon, the, the, the Spalding and Horizon Drive thoroughfare now is at the present time almost undesirable. Today I noticed three semi-trailer truck combinations going from Naperville Road through to <clears throat> Lake Street. I think I saw one go from Lake Street in through there and out to Naperville Road. They do this to avoid the light at Lake and Naperville. The only thing that developing this area commercially will do will increase that traffic, whether it has access to Horizon Drive and the Lake Street Frontage Road or not. Therefore, we object, we object seriously and strenuously to having this rezoned or that any commercial development occur on that area. We would like to see, if it happens, we know that you can vote any way you wish, but we would like to see, if it does happen, that some consideration be given to the residential by virtue of a berm privacy or sound killing fence on top of it, such as I've seen in some areas in Streamwood. With that, I bid you thank you. Thank you. Peter Wendt. Good evening. My name is Peter Wendt, <clears throat> and I live at 1098 Horizon Drive. Ladies, members of the commission, I agree wholeheartedly with what the two prior speakers have said, but I want to add something, if I may. When you look up there at Horizon Drive, where it exits onto that frontage road. It is very, thank you, that is very hard to get out of our subdivision onto Lake Street. The safest way is if you turn to the right, but this will put even more pressure onto that. One thing that would have to be done before anything would go in there is there would have to be a light at that intersection. As the prior speakers mentioned, we've got semis now that are cutting through there. We have got, now it helped for a while when there were the radar signs that were showing the speed to take it down. And then they took them away. It, it's a transient thing, but we get high speed traffic through there. Your concern is not ours on Horizon Drive, I understand that. But if those are allowed to develop for commercial uses, we will see increased pressure that was said on our subdivision. I don't have to reiterate property values or anything like that. The other thing I see is we know that we've got a major rebuild of that 59 interchange coming. What will that do to the property that you want to annex? Will that cut in? Will that take away? Will that make that an easier egress if commercial development goes in there? But I can tell you, when we look at the commercial development that has come up around our subdivision, especially in the back that faces up towards Lake Street, 
It increases noise, it increases light at night. It's not the quiet area that we picked for a residence to raise the children to have a peaceful, quiet evening at night. That is going to bring an awful lot of traffic there. I'm not against commerce. I understand it. But each has its own place. We need to re respect where commerce is, but commerce needs to respect where we are as well and not change our property values and not change the standards that we have where we live. So for your considerations, all of you, thank you very much. Thank you. Ann Bukowski. Thank you. Carolyn Brown. Okay. Melanie. Dare I? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's been covered. Uh, Frederick Cromer. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I, I fully. Uh, I'm thankful for everyone else making such great points because I absolutely agree with them all. We moved in, I don't know, 16 years ago. We came to Bartlett because it was a wooded and quiet and really a beautiful community. Um, I, For one, I don't see the reason of making a commercial. We have empty, I mean, just behind us, if you go towards the Home Depot, there are a huge industrial park that's half empty. We've got strip malls that have empty Aside from just lots of empty commercial area already, I don't know what this is going to do except for, you know, some developers are going to make a lot of money, but we, the residents of this area on Horizon Drive, are going to, are, are going to see our, our, uh, our values go down. I look out my back window and I had this beautiful wooded, uh, this big this wetland and there's this huge hill just before 59. It was all wooded. It was beautiful. They came in, they tore all that down, and it extends much further into the B4 area there. And whereas before, it was quiet, it was restful at night, now I have clear view of Lake Street and a clear view of Route 59. Um, so I'm worried about future development because so far there has been very little in terms of delicacy, in terms of an insensitivity towards, towards the residents of, of our area. And so I'm just kind of worried in terms of what will future projects hold in terms of delicacy and, and, and sensitivity towards the people who bought into this community because it was a quiet and beautiful place to raise our families. Um, and again, with there's plenty of commercial areas that are, aren't being properly utilized already. I'm not sure the point, you know, what tax revenues, how is that going to offset the loss of our property values? I, 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 I don't see the, uh, I, I just don't see the point really. but. Um, I also worry about, you know, you have the, the, the pressures on the, west, what, on the wetlands. I mean, what impact is that going to have on the wetlands that we have here? I mean, what kind of runoff is going to go into that? Is, 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 have we considered that? And then all the, all the points that these other gentlemen have made. <clears throat> Already that, that intersection on Lake Street making a left turn half the time is, is you're gambling with your life. To the right isn't much easier half the time. Um, I, I just don't see this as being, uh, I, I don't see a great gain for the community in general. And again, I, I'm not anti-commerce, I'm not anti-business. Uh, I just, I see this for very little gain, but I, I see a pretty high cost for the, for the community. That's, that's all my thoughts are. So thank you for, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. <clears throat> Julie? <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I don't want to be redundant as well. Um, pretty much everything that my um, fellow community has spoke about are deep, deep concerns for myself. Um, again, I do want to emphasize the traffic. It's, it's unbelievable. There are so many people that are cutting through the Amber Grove um, off of 59 um, speeding. <laughs> and, you know, you're out there walking your dog and it can be pretty scary sometimes. Um, so that is a major, major concern for me as far as what is going to happen with the traffic and how are we going to be able to control people going to commercial areas driving through our subdivision. I am concerned about property values, as previously stated, and um, aesthetics as well. Um, but I'm going to 
look at you and ask each and one, every one of you, if this is your community, your house, where you raise your family, would you want a commercial facility right behind your home? So please ask yourselves that. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have a question or comment? You can you can come up you and can talk come up. And, then, and then fill it out. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> oh. I'm actually also, I, again, I 100% agree with everything everybody said so far. I think that they're great comments. They're definitely things that concern us. My big concern to add to this is just in the little bit of that, um, that one that the east lot and the B4 that's been, the trees have already been cut down, it has increased the noise in our community tremendously. We live at 513 Horizon Drive, so we are facing pretty much into that. And just that alone, just this fall, when we started opening the windows, as the weather started getting nicer and we turned off our air conditioner, I had nights I couldn't leave the windows open. It was so loud I couldn't get to sleep. And that's just with some trees being cut down. Nothing's, been, nothing's happened there yet. They haven't even leveled out the land. There's still a great big hill there. So I have grave concerns over not only property value, not only everything else that everyone said, but also just in addition, just the noise pollution and the aesthetics. It's, it's you know, I don't know that anything good is going to come of that. Thank you for letting me speak. Can you say your name? Thank you. Sorry, Stacy. <laughs> Stacy Cromer is the last name. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else have a question or comment? No one else? As my wife so accurately State your name again, please. Oh, Peter Went, 1098 Horizon Drive. As my wife reminded me, as she does very well, one thing that has been omitted in our discussions are the children in our neighborhood. We have a very large number of little children. With the pressure that we see of the traffic on Horizon Drive and Spalding already, this will add to that. And I, I shadow my wife's concern that this will be a more dangerous environment for our young children because you see them outside on a bike or on their trikes. They're out in their front lawn. Uh, it's, not a, it's, it's not a good idea. So I would please ask you to take that into consideration as well. Thank you. Anyone else have a question, comment? No one? I'll close this portion of the public hearing. Anyone from the uh, commission have any questions? I don't have any questions. I just want to make a comment. Uh, I've been out here for 43 years. When I moved out here, Barclay had 3,800 people. It's got, what, 43,000 people now? Development went all around. I mean, when we moved out there, it was farmland. And everybody survived. Even with the commercial that went in, all the housing that went in, we all survived. I had two children, both are married. One lives in Bartlett. They've got little children. You know, you're, you're concerned of traffic. Whatever goes in there, you're concerned for traffic is, I, I realize that. But I also realized that when we moved out there, they start building commercial and everything else. You know, you have to just watch what's going on with your own children. Now this would help financially for the village if this was to be developed. If this is never developed, you're gonna pay the rest of the taxes. Is that what you want? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right now you're saying yes. Mm 
I defy you to show it us out there. The value of your home is not going to drop. When I when we bought our house, there was nothing out here. With the development, our house is worth a hell of a lot more than what I what I paid for it, including all the development, including all the commercial and everything else. It could. <clears throat> it could very easily. Seriously. It would, and, you know, like I said, I mean, we had no development of commercial at all in this village when I moved here. And, I mean, you know, right now, I, you know, I live right off of Stearns in 59. What, what's that? It's all commercial. And this is, this is Sir, can you come to the microphone? Yeah, I mean, technically, public comment is over, yeah. but it's up to them. I just want to make sure I get I all just, your comments. I just don't really buy yeah. the fact that whatever strip mall goes in there is going to give, bring us such a windfall of tax revenue that that's going to somehow make this, 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 this community that much better. I, I don't buy it. I just don't. It will be spent in other ways. I don't know that it's going to defer any of the losses that we're going to have. And I think it's disingenuous to say that this is not going to affect my property value. I, I think that's entirely disingenuous. Well, that's, that's, your, that's your opinion. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I do. If, if the entrance is going to be set off of 59, maybe, probably, uh, like I said, we don't own any of the property to the south. These are all private property owners. Right. So right now, all we really can look at is right here and the frontage road or horizon. I think, like I said, the goal would be to, to work with all these properties and then have entrances off 59, but it's not a guarantee because we don't own that. Can I, can I ask a question about process here, if it's okay, um, before we all get wrapped up in something that isn't even in front of us as a proposal um, is correct me if I'm wrong Angela in terms of in terms of what happens in, in in annexation and zoning that when we annex a property into the village of Bartlett it automatically comes in as ER1 right correct so that's what's happened with these this property and the one that we're considering tonight when we uh, then move on to the zoning category that's intended in the comprehensive plan, which is the master plan for the development of the, of the village, then we change the underlying zoning to the correct category. Now, all the things that we've talked about tonight that we fully agree with, right, the concerns about engineering and traffic and buffering and safety and noise and light, all those things that were mentioned and whatever ones I just forgot, we have mechanisms between us, us and you, and the village board, the ZBA, right, for watching all of that and for a participatory um, uh, process for us to vet any proposal that might come forward. And all those things, including market, right, come into play, and I dot, right? So uh, it's, it's a traffic is a huge consideration, but all of these things are huge considerations. 
and any proposal that comes in front of us has to pass muster and get past all those things, right? So from our, so the standpoint of the Planning Commission, is, as I view it, Angela, is, is that we're here to look at our zoning regulations, right, and our master plan and what the village is doing, saying we're going to be in a better position uh, to move this forward in a direction uh, that the comprehensive plan has called for in a long, long time, for a long, long time, uh, if we are able to now make this move to the underlying zoning. But we don't have a proposal in front of us to look at, but we will if we're lucky, right? And then we're going to be able to grade it on all those categories that we talked about. And the village board and the planning commission and the ZBA listens. So we have a great municipality. This isn't dialogue time, right? Okay, am I, am I wrong about any of that? No, that is correct. I, I wanted to make that a statement that a traffic study would be done when a development does come in and looking at all of those and other things that you just discussed, um, even the wetlands and mitigation and all of those items. Correct. That would be looked at when a, a development proposal came about, if a development proposal came about. Um, we've had no interest in it since we've owned it since 2004. So, I mean, we just never know. Right. It's just not the time. Anyone else have a question or comment? Jim, I just wanted to make um, one statement that the clearing of the trees on that property, uh, that B4 piece, that was all done by a private owner and um, the village of Bartlett did not have anything to do with it. So I just wanted to state that. <laughs> okay. Angela, would you, would you need two motions or can you do it all in one? If you could do whatever you'd like, you can do two motions or you can do one. Can I ask a question? No, I'm sorry, the public was closed. Thank you. You guys have any problem with doing all in one? Do it all in one. Do it all in one. Yeah. Do it all in one. You have no problem with that? Okay. Uh, then we'll be looking for a motion for the petitioner's request to annexation of the east lot and the rezoning of the east lot upon annexation from ER1 to B4 and subject to the following uh, conditions that the uh, staff came up with, A, B, C, and D. We have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. second. Who was, I'm sorry. Motion here and second. Motion. Thank you. Any additions, corrections? Uh, Secretary, call the roll. John Miasso? Yes. Jack Allen? Yes. Jerry Kellis? Yes. Tom Connor? Yes. Jim Lumberg? Yes. Mark Hopkins? Yes. Okay, motion's carried. Okay. The next meeting that this will go to will be a committee of the whole meeting. Um, and then, which they're just a recommending body, so it goes to a committee of the whole meeting, which is the board, and then after the committee of the whole meeting, then it goes to the full board for a final vote. So there are other meetings if you would like to attend or if you have any questions. Um, I'll just give you my, my, phone, my work phone number so I can let you know what meeting date because I don't set the agenda. Um, my direct line is 630-540-5900. Uh, Three four six three zero five four zero five nine three four. Angela. The, so the plan commission recommended approval of the rezonings, and their recommendation goes on to the full board, and the full board is the ones that make the final decision. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, old business and new business. We I'm will sorry. have a meeting next month. We, we will have a meeting next month. There we have a be. couple items on the agenda. Okay. We have a meeting next month. The meeting next month. Okay. If you, if you guys can quietly walk out, I'm sorry, we still have a, the rest of the meeting. 
We're almost done. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Anyone on question have any questions? No. Old and no new business? No? Okay. Next item is uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Adjourn. Thank you.